Imagine getting up every day full of energy as if you were in your 20s again. What would that be like? What would it be worth to you? What is your health worth to you? Think about it. Your health isn't everything, but without it, everything else is nothing. And yet, too many of us are taking it for granted until something goes wrong. And no one wakes up hoping to be diagnosed with a disease or chronic illness. And yet, we've never been taught how to be proactive in our health through our school or public health. As a registered health coach and integrative health practitioner, I believe it's time this information is made available to everyone. Combining new knowledge around your health and the ability to do my functional medicine lab tests in the comfort of your own home will allow you to optimize your health for today and all your tomorrows. Don't wait for your wake up call. Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call podcast. I am Melissa Dealey, your host here with my good friend, Denise Belil. Denise, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm super excited. I'm excited to have you here because, of course, we've come to know each other quite well over the last 18 months to two years. And I know that we both have a deep passion for health. But you've also stepped into some new areas as well with uh, your work. And I'm just going to do a little intro for the audience here for your benefit. Denise is a serenity expert and positive intelligence specialist. She specializes in working with professionals 50 and over to define their new identity so they can rock the second half of their lives. She empowers them to bring back the spark and unleash their inner strength all of which I really, really love. And how many people are in that second phase of their life wondering like, who am I now? The kids have left home or maybe there's a breakup or something and they're just maybe feeling a little bit lost. And so I love that you are helping them find themselves again and bring back that spark, as you say. But how did you get into this? Well, thanks for asking. And I I like that you actually got it, you know, like, because you, what you said, that's, uh, I'm just going to go back a little bit. And then I'll tell you, I got to that is when you said, you know, like the kids are getting out, of, are, are leaving, going to school and leaving the nest or, or uncertain about the relationship. And also we'll get back to that, but also like, do I want to stay in that relationship or, or do I, do I want to walk away now that I'm free from the kids and I can do whatever I want. Right. But we'll get back to that. But how did I got into doing that? I always been fascinated with health and wellness. And that's where we connect very much with. Like I've done study on functional medicine too. And I've done health coaching and everything that has to do with longevity. I swear when I was a young adult that I would never grow old. So I don't look at the over 65, don't I? That's because I'm not 65. <laughs> and, uh, and then I've decided that over the years, like I, my my favorite to go book were self help and health book and all the book that I could read about mental fitness, mental health, emotional intelligence, you know, all of that. I was always intrigued. And and when I did my functional medicine course, that's where I've decided to, unlike you. I was not very excited about learning about the system and the digestive system and what that affects your body and this and that. But what I realized that a lot of time when we have any problem in our body, it is related initially with stress. So Absolutely. I've decided to go, why don't I go right to the source? Why don't I start from where it starts? And then I'll let Melissa deal with the rest when, <laughs> when it I comes love it. to realizing that. So You're absolutely why. right. I'm just going to put in mm -hmm. there a stat that 90% of all doctor's visits are related back to stress. Mm -hmm. And I recently posted that and I actually had a couple of doctors comment on my post who, would say, who said, I would venture to say it's actually even higher than that. Stat. Mm. that's a reported stat wow that's wonderful so, so you're right in terms of going straight to the source like addressing the stress is so needed in today's world so I love that you're doing this yes so that's where it came from that's where uh, I coined myself as a serenity expert because I have I, I tried to calculate it at some point like how can you calculate how many meditation hours I have and I I sum it up to about 15,000 hours of of sitting on my bum and meditating or or consciousness or whatever right like your mindfulness and 
And then I, I studied like crazy emotional intelligence in the nineties. I could, I would read like this, the scholar book, you know, like the big Bible of Baron, you know, of emotional right. intelligence and, and all of that led me to really learn from taking courses to and all that, but learn to really control what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. I'm not hundred percent perfect. You know, I, I, I can't I don't vote think for that. We ever will be. I don't think we ever will. But be. it is a practice that we just Absolutely. have to keep practicing every single day. But then I can snap into, oh, mm, I'm walking into that path of negativity. Do I want to go there? Mm -mm, no, I don't want to. I want to be positive. I want to see the gift and all that. So that's that's how it came to be where I am now and developing this practice of wanting to help others really to unleash their positivity and let it let it flow so that they can really spark in the second half of their life I love it that's re super powerful and our mindset is so key to all of that mm -hmm. because of course our mindset is stemming from our beliefs which trigger the thoughts trigger the language that we're using which then trigger the actions that we're taking even unconsciously, which then triggers the results that we're getting, right? Yeah. And so if you're not happy in your life, if there's things, aspects of your life in any aspect of your life that isn't where you want it to be, it's not about looking at the results and just focusing on, well, how do I shift the result? You actually have to take those steps back to the belief, to the mindset and work with someone like you to create that practice that will then get the results people are looking for. Yeah. And just like you said, it's it's the different level. It's the thought, the language we use, the action we take, and then the result we'll get from all of that. It's all interlinked. So in order to change the result, you have to change the thought. If exactly. you don't change the way you think, mm -hmm. you will always have the same result. Exactly. And it's also so much of that is unconscious until you learn yeah. the awareness around it. Absolutely. Right? We're not aware of the many thousands of conversations we have with ourselves in our head every single day until we learn to be aware of it mm -hmm. and learn to question it and learn to say, hey, I don't like that thought. I'm going to change that thought, right? Absolutely. Which is where your work comes in is you're teaching people about that. And so share that process with me, you know, if you can, the tools that you're using or how you work with people and guide people through bringing that spark back. Oh, for sure. For sure. Thank you. It's a five-step um, system. Mm -hmm. And so the way it works is initially, I want people to, to realize what are those voices that they have in their mind. So I have an assessment. It's called the positive intelligence PQ assessment, like the saboteurs assessment. And then you find out who are your five saboteurs, your nine saboteurs. There's nine saboteurs and a judge. Everybody has a judge. And uh, <laughs> everybody has the saboteurs too, to a certain level. And then once you do the assessment, then we sit together and then we learn how they act and interact into, into your body and into your brain and into how, how do they, you know, if I go back to, to a thought and words like, whatever we tell ourselves, what what are they telling you? Because the saboteurs, all the voices in your mind are your saboteurs for the most part. They either telling you, um, you need to do better, you need to achieve more. And sometimes these voices can come from learned experiences from our parents telling us that it's not good enough. How come, like my mom used to tell my older sister, how come you got only 99? Why didn't you get 100? It's like, damn, I got 99, <laughs> mom. <laughs> yeah, 99 is pretty good. <laughs> but this stick, right? This mm -hmm. stick the kids, or even when you're an adult, if somebody put that in your mind, that stick in your brain. And then you're like, well, I got to have 100 all the time. So right. which caused that person to overboard into studying overflow, like they need to have 110. If there's a bonus question, they have to have that right too. Right. Right. Where the so, perfectionism comes out because exactly. they have to get the perfect score. Um, or the other side of it that can come out is just, I'm not good enough. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. Cause I didn't get a hundred. So I'm not good enough. And then we have that story running around in our brain. So whatever, happened, very often from happened. childhood mm -hmm. that was never put there maliciously at all, no. but it's there and it's holding us back. Absolutely. Yeah. So that call with me after you've done the assessment is going to give you an idea of really how, like, who are your top saboteur? I usually look at the top four and then, and then we, we look at them and then say, okay, how do you see this one coming into your life? How do you hear it in your voice? What does it tells you, tell you? And then we go back to those and then we talk. And then once we've done that, then we jump into really learning more about these saboteurs and how to um, switch your mindset. So you learn tools that allows you to go from the negative to the positive, to go from the defeatist uh, thinking to the curious and like, oh, what's the gift in that? How can right. I... How can I bring uh, curiosity into that situation that's going to resolve it in a certain way that I don't know how, but I'm curious right. to explore. So, so that's the third from step. The, so that's what going from the victim mentality to what is this experience supposed to be teaching me mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that I can come out the other side. That's yeah. where the curiosity is coming in is to figure out what is the, what is it that I need to learn? to yeah. come up the other side right yeah and that's so so we have as i mentioned earlier the nine saboteur and the judge but on the positive the positive side of that is we have one sage and has five powers so these powers that's what you learn you learn how how to use them you learn how to recognize when your saboteurs are there and then get curious get innovative about the solution get uh have a lot of empathy for yourself and for others it's like yeah it's I, it's, I know it has been hard going through that thinking this way or if I was a little kid would I really talk to myself this way right if I was to talk to my little five years old would I tell that five years old like consciously you're such a loser right consciously when you think about it this way it's like mm -mm. so why am I telling myself that now right why why do i feel that i deserve that today and and if i was to talk to my five my own five my me as five i wouldn't say that so then that switch the mindset that that you raise your negative pattern and it builds the positive pattern and it's like anything it's like any groove right like if you if you have you know a little saw and the more you saw into something well the groove will get bigger right, right. And then yes. you can take the sawdust of that and put it in the other groove and then fill it up so that right. you know, it disappears <laughs> and you don't have that groove anymore. It works differently, right. but that's an easy way to see it. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's where you're building the new the neurology, right? Mm -hmm. And you're deepening the path, as you're yes. saying. Yeah. You build that neurology so that you're going to the positive much more quickly, yeah. if not instantly, mm -hmm. most of the time, rather than going to the negative. Yes, right. because whatever you feed will grow. So yeah. if you don't feed the negative thinking, it will slowly shrink. Right. And we have an analogy with positive intelligence that when we have a negative thought is just like if you imagine yourself in the kitchen and as if you get to your hand on the hot, the hot iron, the hot plate, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that's hot. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, that's the awareness of a negative thinking. In life, you don't say, oh, that's hot. Oh, my God, I can't believe how hot this iron is. And, you know, that hurts so much. But that's what we do with our negative thinking, right? We stay in it and we dwell in it and we say, right. I feel so bad. And that's horrible what my boss did. And my husband, she, he said that and da, 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 da. So we stay there. So the idea of switching into the positive is the awareness is, is good. You need to be aware. So it's like how I'm negative right now. Okay, let's switch on the positive. Right. And so you're using that analogy of the heat for the listeners there that aren't watching your hand moving. But the when we touch the heat, we remove our hand immediately. And where yes. you're trying to get people to is that negative thought is like the hot plate that you're trying to remove immediately. Yes, and you don't leave your hands on the hot plate. You don't, exactly. so, which means you don't stay in the negative. You exactly. don't stay in the negative thinking. By learning positive intelligence, you learn to be aware because we need to be aware of, of our feelings. We don't say, mm -hmm. you know, don't think about your feeling. You have no more negative feeling anymore. 
yeah, you can feel pain, but it's a signal to say, okay, I feel pain. What do I need to do right now in order to, to feel better? What do I need? It's a signal that something is not right. So mm -hmm. what do I need to fix right now so that I, I, I'll be happy and I won't feel that pain? Right. And I can release the pain. I don't have to say stuck in it. Yeah, exactly. And it's the when same. You get stuck in it, it's like having your hand on the hot plate. Right. And it's the same whether it's pain or anger or fear or frustration or whatever it is that's coming up for you that you don't have to stay stuck in it. No, there's way there's a way out. Exactly. And you have the power with these tools to get yourself out very quickly, which yes. is what I love about this yes. work. And so the fourth step is to mm -hmm. to practice. It's not right. because you you go to to a course and then it's like going on a weekend retreat and then you go back home and you don't do anything about what you've learned. Right. right. So the fourth step is to stay into the practice build that awareness, build that big neurological pathway towards the positive, keep practicing, anchoring that knowledge while working with the coach that will guide you when situations are difficult. I have clients who say, oh, last week I couldn't stop thinking about when I got fired from that job. Like I was just so angry. And I said, well, did you do some, because we have a little exercise called PQ rep. I said, did you do some PQ rep on that? He said, no. You know, like meaning like I know I should, but no, I didn't. And I said, okay, let's let's see how we can cure that. Let's see how we can resolve these thinking and how you can switch and and see the gift and see, you know, the greatness that happened after you got fired and all that stuff. So then we worked on that. And then the week after I say, So did you practice? He say yes. And I say, Are you feeling better? He said, Yeah, absolutely. Right. So because we forget you do the you do we the do. course, you do the practice, but then it's like, oh, when things get hard, you just get back into the the spiral down. Right. Absolutely. It happens to all of us. And that's why working with a coach is so important because as we're building new habits, it's easy to fall back to where we were because that new habit isn't built yet. And we may have the tools, but if we get thrown into that deep negative emotion we may not remember to use the tools in that moment because that habit isn't deeply ingrained enough exactly exactly but then when you start to use the tool then you discover that wow life is beautiful you discover that i don't have to stay in that negative state i can't i can't you know, move on and be happy and I'm allowed. And then you quiet down those voices of your saboteur and you feel empowered because when you give up to the saboteurs, you, you give your power away. Yeah. You give them the right to, to, to carry you around, you know, wherever they want you to go. But once you start to become more in charge of your life, then you feel so empowered, you, 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 you celebrate, then that's the fifth step is celebrating and reaping the reward of getting into a difficult situation. And all of a sudden you realize that you look around and you're thinking like, how come? How come I'm feeling so good? And that's such a bad situation because you, you've learned to not to get carried around by your emotion you know there's something hard that <laughs> just happened but you handle it with grace and you handle it with serenity and you say okay okay what have I learned now okay I've learned that perfect you know there's no point crying and because what happened five seconds ago five years ago you can't change it and that's a, my big thing that I teach with my client is they learn is if it happened five seconds ago forget it you can't change it right? You can't change it. You can't, can't change go it. back. You know? Exactly. 100%. You cannot change it. Five seconds ago, five months ago, five years ago, can't be changed. So may as well like, okay, how do I move forward and stay yeah. positive? Because there's no point dragging the negative to the present every single day because you can't change it regardless how right. long you want to try to change it. It won't change. And as we've alluded to already, when we drag that negative with us every single day, it's bogging us down. It's draining our energy. It's making us feel heavy. And those things we may be aware of, but it's also impacting our health negatively oh, inside our body, right? Absolutely. Washing down those emotions and then just regurgitating them over and over again in our stomach, in our gut. That's stress on the body. And 
stress on the body leads to illness oh, down the line. Yeah. Like I've had moments in the past that something happened and I was so upset that I, I had to go to the bathroom because everything was liquid, right? Right. I'm sure it yeah. happened to many people. Mm -hmm. It's, like, it's mm -hmm. amazing the, yes. the strength of the mind onto the body. Mm -hmm. Imagine oh. the disturbance that that created in the body to make me go to the bathroom because I'm going to do it in my pants, right? Right. It's crazy. Yes. So imagine that's just one event. But if we mm -hmm. live in the stress and in the, the, I call that sustained stress, having one stress in your life, you know, it's like, okay, I can't handle that. But it's not right. just like, for example, it's not just the bill in the mail. It's not just the traffic, you know, uh, going to the office. It's not just the computer that decide not to work. It's not just the, the coworker beside you that's blah, 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 keep yapping all day, let's stress you out. It's all of those build up together. It's like toxin, right? Mm -hmm. If you take one toxin into your body, well, you'll be fine. Your body will fight that and all that. But if you you take toxic food and toxic water and toxic air and toxic, you know, environment, uh, toxic thought, like your body will really go out of whack. And it's the same thing, you know, for stress or toxins or anything. Absolutely. It's that buildup that over time creates our health issues down the line and mm. we can't see any of it. So we tend to ignore it because we can't see it. So I love that you're bringing awareness to this in order to bring it to the forefront mm -hmm. because people need to know this. And again, this isn't taught through public health. It isn't taught through our school system. It's been in my experience anyway it's been something that's been you know largely taught out of us in society in the last hundred years I feel like we're much less in tune with our bodies than we were a hundred years ago right mm -hmm. because we've been in this busy 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 do 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 mode right where multitasking is rewarded and expected and the 60 hour work week is demanded etc cetera, etc cetera, right yeah. and I know when I was in the corporate world there was you know, we would get told regularly, you know, like, don't bring your personal problems to work. Don't, you know, you got to shut everything out, sit here, do your work, be a robot, don't feel anything, right? And that's as a society, what we've become. And it's only just starting to shift now yeah. into recognizing the importance of slowing down, getting in tune with our body, taking time to you know, meditate, look after our brain, look after our overall health, release the stress, that multitasking isn't actually helping you get more done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just getting you on a hamster wheel, right? Yeah. So all of this is awareness that's been coming out, you know, probably slowly since the turn of this century, but more so in the last 10 years, and it's just yeah. starting to build up. Um, but the fact that you're doing this work and, you know, helping people get back in touch with their bodies, their emotions is so important. Mm, and thank you. We have to lower the stress level in the world today. Yeah. And it's up to every one of us because absolutely like if I like for me, when, when me people are around me or even just walking into my place, because I have that energy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the energy is all around me and people say, wow, it's so peaceful here. Mm hmm. And, and sometimes you would walk in someone's place and you'll be like, oh my God, I, when can, when can we leave? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so stressed out being here. Right. So when you become peaceful, when you radiate peace and serenity, you will affect the people around you. And then these people will affect people around them. And Absolutely. then it's a big, you know, uh, changes that we can make just, just mm -hmm. by taking care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we influence all the people around us. Absolutely. And that's something that's come up a lot in the podcast lately is that ripple effect. Yeah. Right. And just touching that one person who you're the leader, there may not even be doing what you're doing, but because you're showing up in a different way, they show up in a different way. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's really powerful. It's not that you have to change anybody else. You can't but you can change yourself. Yeah. And as you change yourself, the people around you begin to change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's another thought altogether. But when I talk about relationship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I talk a lot about that. <laughs> it's so true, right? Yeah. You can't change your partner. You can only change the way you are around your partner so exactly. that you enhance the relationship and the rest will come together. Unconsciously. They don't even notice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very powerful. I've seen that. I've seen that happen. I've experienced it. And it is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I love this work you're doing. I love the saboteur assessment um, and learning who your saboteurs are so that you can work with that and then eventually be releasing them. Mm -hmm. Because they're the baggage that are weighing yeah. us down and holding us back. Yeah. So that's awesome. So thank you so, so much for sharing all of this. It's really powerful work. And I love to ask all of my guests a specific question. And that question is, what does don't wait for your wake up call mean to you? That means that don't wait for extreme, like don't wait for the divorce paper don't wait for you wanting to give your resignation don't wait for uh, the extreme of i can't do this anymore before you decide that hey maybe i'll bring a little bit more peace in my life maybe i can do you know like small amount if i tell you meditate half an hour in the day you said i can't do that but if i tell you meditate three four times for two minutes you'll be yeah i think i can do that so there's ways around it there, and those two minutes can be very powerful so there's way around it and don't wait for the the i can't do this anymore i'm gonna explode take a step back now today right now and see if there are things you can do in your life that's going to allow you to be a little bit more peaceful and let me know i can help you with the uh at least the assessment, because just doing the assessment bring awareness to, oh, I didn't realize I was a controller, you know, like for me, it was just being productive and all that. But in reality, I'm pushing people away and I'm get out of my way. It's the way it should be done. It's like, Whoa. So there's once you're aware of that, it's like, oh, how am I treating people around me? So by doing the assessment, it allows you to bring that awareness and I'll be happy to go over that assessment with you. So that's the how to not wait for the last minute so that it's too late. That's awesome. Thank you. And you're so right. It's don't, if you wait till the very end, when you blow up, you don't even know where to turn, but now you've just gifted the audience, all of this information. And if they don't know how to get started, it just makes sense for them to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. Start right here, do the assessment. I know we'll put the assessment in the show notes, but how can people reach out to you? Well, there's uh, my my name, my email. It's Denise at denisevillil.com. So you can send me an email and say, hey, Denise, I heard you on Melissa. I'm also, if you look on Facebook, Denise Bellil, look, Google Denise Bellil. You'll find a lot of stuff that might surprise you, but you'll find me <laughs> on on google and a lot of places are you the only one that's there with the spelling of your name oh no there's a doctor in montreal okay <laughs> actually when i quick note when i went to montreal i went back to live there after i was in toronto and all that and i moved in in a complex that was right behind where she had business she had a business you know and i know it's her mm -hmm. and i took an appointment with her just to go see her <laughs> But if you Google Denise Belil, Serenity Expert, for sure. They'll you find you. Me. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and I know you've also very generously offered a spring cleaning for your brain. Mm -hmm. So um, share, I've put that in the show notes as well, but share a little bit more about that. Yeah, the spring cleaning for your brain. So it's, we all have stuff that is going on in our brain that sometimes it could be taught action like all the steps that i said earlier but also people sometimes we have people in our life that is stuck in our brain that is not for the benefit of our life we need to get rid of some people some action so i give the example of emptying a garage putting everything on the lawn and then bringing in it's a little bit Marie Kondo type of thing but not exactly and then um deciding yeah i love that or that behavior is you know me smoking for example i don't smoke but smoking is that really something that's good for me in my life so brain and why do i smoke so you go into you know 
different way. There's a three-step system and it's really well defined in the little PDF there. That sounds fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I will wow. definitely check that out as well because, you know, we spring clean our house, you know, at least in the spring, but several times a year. And uh, definitely decluttering our mind is very powerful in allowing us to find serenity and peace and calm. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any last messages that you'd like to leave with the audience to inspire them to get started today? It's not difficult. So tell yourself, because sometimes we say, oh, I don't have time. It's too hard. I can't do this. Do the assessment. If anything, anything else, it takes five to 10 minutes, depending how fast you read. It's a one to five answer. And do the assessment. Book a call with me. That's the minimum I would say to do because... I'm here to help you. I want my goal is to help humanity become more peaceful because it, as I was mentioning earlier, if each each individual become more peaceful and it's the ripple effect, we'll change our planet. So so that's my goal. So that's easy, guys and girls. Do the assessment, book a call. And the other thing that I would love to ask you to do is if you enjoyed this episode, you think that it can benefit someone else, please send it to them so that they can hear it too. And you are creating a ripple effect simply by doing that. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, be happy, be safe, be joyful, be peaceful. If you're enjoying my content and someone that wants to step into being proactive in your health and learning more, I would love to invite you to join my membership community. There's a link in the show notes for only $19.99 a month. You get access to all of my content and there's a lot as well as weekly calls that you can come and get your health questions answered. It's truly priceless. I'd love to see you join the community. Check out the link in the show notes.